Welcome everyone to Zija Biz Talks. My name is Amy McKenzie. I'm an Emerald executive with the company and it's really my privilege and pleasure to be hosting this evening's uh, discussion about Zija International. And uh, before I begin though, I want to take a moment to welcome all of you who are attending tonight. Um, we've got leaders on the call as I can see here. We have uh, quite a few people working hard out in the field. But I also want to give a very special welcome to those of you who might be hearing this information for the first time. You know, perhaps you're considering you know, a little bit of supplemental income. A couple hundred dollars a week can make a big difference. Perhaps you're more like myself. I was looking to really replace my income. And I'm happy to say that's possible. I was someone with no background or experience and I was able to do that in about a year. You might be someone who's looking for life-changing income. There's a lot of people doing that right now. And in fact, I have a very special guest tonight who can address that very level of success. But before I bring him over, I just want to let you know, we're going to do a brief overview. We're going to couple and kind of focus on a few things that someone who does have that level of experience looks for when they're choosing a company. It begins with leadership, right? You don't want to get on a sailboat without a good captain. You've got to know there's people that are strong at the helm that have integrity and can go the long run. Then, of course, you want to have products that are real. They have to work to be able to believe in them and want to use them and want to share them. That's what makes this opportunity so authentic. And then finally, the timing. Where are we right now in the history of this company and what does that mean for you? Why is that significant? And so it's, a, it's really my pleasure to be able to bring over someone who can really address those areas. In fact, this gentleman has decades of successful experience in this industry. What I love about his story is he's one of us, if you will, right? I, I used to think you had to have a business degree or be a salesperson, which I'm not, marketing expert. But really, if it wasn't for this man, I probably wouldn't have had the courage to try because I understood it's none of those things. When you have the kind of leadership and training that I've received that we all get inside this company, literally anyone can do this. And that's what's so remarkable about the success he's achieved and what an inspiration he is. So with that, I'm going to look over here for our special secret guest. Mr. Fred Holmes is a triple diamond executive with the company. And I have to tell you, he is one of the top leaders and trainers. Uh, let's see, let me get you lowered over there. Oh, Fred, there we go. Um, it's such a pleasure to have you take the time to join us, Fred, with your robust business. <laughs> um, it's a big deal to have you joining us today. And uh, Fred, we're not seeing your picture there. Let me get you unmuted. There you go. Fred, can you hear me? I hear you fine. And, okay. Um, I don't know why you don't see me? Yeah, well, let's see here. Yeah, I don't seem to have uh, any way to get you to be showing here. I apologize for that. We love to see your face. <laughs> you know, um, I know. I'm usually pretty good about this on the other side. Let me figure out why this isn't working here. Okay. Well, uh, in the meantime, I'm going to brag about Fred a little bit. Um, as I was saying, what I love about Fred's story is that he, you know, wasn't someone who was coming at this with some MBA. Right? He, was, he was someone out in the field who's really had... Um, you know, kind of a background that we can all relate to. Someone that has been, you know, working the nine to five kind of experience and was able to turn that com around completely. And to me, that means a lot because I think one of the things I love most about what I've come to understand about network marketing itself, there's no discrimination. You literally, it doesn't matter what age you are, thankfully, <laughs> it doesn't matter what your background, your education, uh, in this case, we're in all 60 countries, what countries you live in, um, language. I mean, it's really incredible to me that you can be 18 or 88. If you decide you want to do this, you can follow a simple duplicatable system, which we have inside this company. In fact, I learned that one from Fred. Um, and uh, he has a training that we can do in literally 30 minutes to begin the process of building an income that pays you over and over again. I like to call it the referral fee that keeps on giving, simply by sharing something you love. So Fred, how are you doing over there with your picture? We're still not seeing you. You don't see the camera, and neither do I. I'm gonna, uh, 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 I'm gonna go, uh, I'm gonna shut down and come back, okay? Okay, we'll see if that works. Okay, so in the meantime, 
I'm going to cover just a few things about the company. First of all, I have a little bit of a... All right, there we go. Um, one thing about this company, it's all about leadership, right? And we've got that in spades with Ken Brailsford. Ken, this man has literally developed two previous billion-dollar legacy companies. Uh, you may have heard of Nature Sunshine. In fact, he's the father of herbal encapsulation. So it was his idea to put herbs in a capsule almost 50 years ago. That's a really big deal, right? Um, and that not only did he do it then, but that company's still running. He went on to form a second company, Enrich International, now under the name of Unicity, that's also done billions of dollars in sales. It's still in business today. ZJ International is his third company. Clearly, this man knows how to run a company. He knows what to do. And when you're dealing with someone who has that level of expertise, you're in good shape. Oh, looks like Fred's back. But unfortunately, Fred, we're still, still not seeing you. Can you hear us? I hear you fine. I'm gonna, uh, that's really interesting that my camera isn't showing. All right, I've got a workaround. I'll be back in a minute. Okay. <laughs> All right, well, so now these are some of the things that we would be covering regardless which is, you know, you want to know, as I said, that whoever's running the ship isn't going away, that it's going to be something solid, something you can count on, right? Well, we know that this for Ken Railsford and his family is, it's really a pay it forward, right? He literally came out of retirement to bring Moringa to the world. That's what inspired him. In fact, he talks about being spiritually prompted to come out of retirement. It felt it was that important because this one botanical could do more for mankind than all the wonderful products he made in all his 50 years. And so we've got leadership, integrity, and heart at the very foundation of this company. And that leads to products, really. The Moringa is where we began, it's our flagship product. And we have a whole core nutrition line based on that Moringa, which by the way, was named Superfood of 2018. So he certainly was validated as we all have been in, in our understanding of what this botanical can do for us. Um, but we didn't stop there. The company's always pushing the envelope. So we have the Moringa Core Nutrition line. We also have a weight management system, which is all natural. People have lost, sure, 10, 20, 30 pounds, but 50, 60, 100, several hundred pounds. And they've done it naturally. And so we hear people say, you know, it's, it's not coming back. I don't have that flabby skin thing. I really feel good. I'm losing inches, not just you know water weight. It's it's real. It's lasting, and uh, it's life changing for people. So and then that led to um, our moringa skincare, the Gen M. It's called for Generation Moringa. Well, that's all based on the moringa seed, which is a dry touch oil. It's absolutely brilliant. Can literally absorb seven dermal layers deep in less than five minutes, and it's incredibly nutritive. So everything that you would be drinking in with our Drink Life and Moringa Core Nutrition, you're getting externally on your skin, and it's wonderful. Okay. We also have personal care products, because anything that good is worth making a toothpaste out of. In fact, I've never seen so many people get excited about toothpaste, but it's really that good. Um, we have the wonderful shampoo and conditioner and deodorant and the all-natural antibacterial that kills the bad bacteria but doesn't kill the good bacteria. Um, just a lot of solutions for personal care. We also have a sports fitness line that our professional athletes are really excited about. And they're excited about it because it works. So if you care about your health, you don't want to be ingesting chemicals, but you're, you need results. This ripsticks line that we have, oh, there's Fred. Hey, we see you now. Wonderful. Let's make sure you're not muted. Fred, can, no, you hear can you hear me? I sure can. I sure can. Not exactly sure what happened. We're so glad you joined us. <laughs> Thank you very much. It's a, it's a little different to be on, you know, this side of the webinar and yeah. nice to see you. Thank you. <laughs> well, we were just going to, um, just on the ripsticks and the all natural sports line, which I know you use quite a bit. And then the other uh, category would be our essential oils. Yes, there it is. So we've kind of covered a little bit of the leadership, some of the product lines um, and how that makes a difference. But before we go on to that third ingredient that you've taught me, right, that you look for as a professional, maybe you could take a moment and share your story, because I teased everybody about how great it is. <laughs> um, because you, you know, you're one of us. You, you gave me the confidence to try and do this um, because of that simple duplicatable system. So what had you 
you know, first get started in network marketing? You know, uh, it, it, it wasn't my, uh, you know, I didn't grow up dreaming about becoming a professional network marketer. Uh, actually, uh, uh, I had this question, you know, what, what did I you know, want to be when I was growing up? Well, when I remember being about four, I think I was about four or five when I first realized what I really wanted to be when I grew up was a fire truck. <laughs> you know, I mean, think about it, you know, lots of flashing lights, big red truck and, you know, and everybody's cheering you when you show up and stuff. I mean, what kid wouldn't want to be a fire truck? And then I realized, you know, kids can't beat trucks. And so, uh, uh, actually, when, when I was first introduced to Zija, or to not to Zija, to the industry of network marketing, this is, you know, a million years ago, 30, I think by about 33 years ago, I was a cross-country truck driver. And so, I, didn't, I couldn't be a fire truck, but I could drive a truck, right? right. And so, and I love that, you know, there was nothing better. I mean, that, that was like probably the only job that I'd ever had that I kept for more than a year at a time. Uh, but it, it was it was not because I was looking for a different opportunity. I did well, you know, what I thought was well. It, it was my son. You know, my son was hitting, my older boy was hitting school age. He had some educational challenges. And, uh, and, and they were not going to provide the resources that he needed. And so all of a sudden, uh, you know, 30 plus years ago, uh, I'm faced with a, with a situation where if I need to, if I'm going to fulfill on my promise to my son, you know, to, to do everything that I can do to help him become everything that he can become, uh, I had to find a way to make a lot of money so I could pay for the specialized resources that the school district wasn't going to provide. Uh, but equally as important, and I think most parents of, you know, special needs children understand this, I needed to have the ability to be with him while he was growing up, to be constant in his life. And, uh, you know, outside of network marketing, I didn't find any, no, they were not offering any truck drivers, you know, six figure incomes with a flexible schedule. There weren't a lot of jobs like that out there for me. Uh, but I'll tell you what, what got my attention. When I was first introduced to this type of business, it made so much sense. You know, if it, you got products that, that I would use, okay, I mean, I'd probably use these products. And I thought, well, if I'd use them, I'll bet you some of my friends would want to use them. Uh, I could get involved. I could create an income uh, marketing these products to my friends. Some of them would probably want to do the same thing. I could start building a distribution team. And what I was told very early on, if you find a simple system that creates duplication and you share the message, the people will find you. And, and you know, I, I'm not, you know, I heard you say early in the broadcast, you know, successful throughout my, uh, my career. You know, it was not a real big, the beginning was not a real successful thing. I mean, you know, honestly, it took some time to learn how to do this, to create the level of income I needed. Uh, but for me, it wasn't so much a matter of, of you know, some kind of focus or determination. It was just real simple. There wasn't anything else out there for me. There was nothing that was going to create the kind of income I needed and the kind of lifestyle I desired to be with my son other than this. And so I just didn't quit. I mean, that's, you know, I'd like to tell you there was some special magic. I just didn't quit. And within a couple of years, I'd created an environment where I had what I was looking for, the money that I needed, the time freedom, and I retired. And well, it was about 10 years from the time I started network marketing, the time I was able to step back. I was in my uh, early forties and I didn't have to work anymore. You know, I mean, it was, it was, it was, it was stunning to be honest with you. And then, I'll tell you who has the hardest time believing it happened, me. <laughs> well, we're glad it did because you bring such authenticity to the table and, um, you know, I'm forever grateful. Uh, my claim to fame is I said yes and never quit. <laughs> <laughs> and that's true, Amy. You just would not quit. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I, it took me a long time to realize you really can't fail on this unless you never talk to another living human soul because you're not gonna be able to help sharing this stuff. It's so good. Um, so, you know, and I know that you are, you know, you have a lot of experience with health products. Um, what was it about, you know, Zija in particular when you came, you know, I mean, how many companies must have approached you? I, I know that when people have the kind of success that you've had, that you must have got a lot of offers and yet you didn't take any of them. Yet you came out of retirement 
to come aboard with Zija in his infancy at that. So, you know, what, why? Yeah, you know, that, that's pretty funny because when I, when I made that decision and, and I didn't leave my, my previous company and uh, actually was in the uh, mid 90s when I uh, finally, you know, stepped away from the industry. I didn't leave that company because I was, you know, uh, uh, burned out or anything. I love this profession. It's not really like work, um, but the company had challenges. And, and honestly, for me, uh, there is there is nothing there is no dollar amount you can put on my integrity. And when I could no longer stand on a stage or in somebody's living room or be on a conference call, we didn't have you know video conferencing like we have today. When I could no longer say that this opportunity that I was in back then was as good for you know you today as it has been for me, when I could no longer say that, I stopped. I wasn't going to say that, you know. Uh, I just could not do that. Uh, I mean, it's in Proverbs, you know, if you have a choice between gold and silver uh, or a good name, pick the good name. And that's when I, you know, and I didn't make a big scene. I just kind of stepped down. Uh, I always believed that if there was ever uh, an opportunity that met the criteria, and I honestly, I set the bar really high, okay? Mm -hmm. I said, if these things are present, I will get back in, but not unless I saw these things. And there were actually five things I looked for. Three of them were the, you know, the critical things. Okay. I looked for experienced corporate leadership, had to have a good track record, had to have the experience, had to have the integrity. Okay. Because that's the biggest challenge that I've seen in a lot of companies that have come and gone in the industry is the people that start the company they sell people on a lifelong opportunity, but in their mind, they got a five-year game plan to make all the money and leave. And, and you know, you can't build a business on that. Uh, I looked for the right kinds of products, products that, you know, products that, you know, met a genuine need. People need to, be, you know, know they need these products. They had to, to uh, be, you know, I looked for products that were unique to the marketplace. It's always best to be first to market, have the new product. Uh, products that were, you know, uh, cutting edge, highly consumable. Consumable products are a really important thing. I've seen a lot of companies that are selling appliance or hardware kinds of things. Well, that may be great for an initial sale, but personally for me, you know, between me and everybody else here, I'd much rather have something I can do today and it'll keep paying me day after day after day, even if I don't work this week or this month or this year. I mean, that's something to me that's incredibly important because you never know what life's going to happen, right? You know, I mean, you know, uh, almost two years ago, I needed to take six months off from my Zija business because of, you know, my mom's accident. And, you know, what do you do if you don't have residual income? Uh, you know, the bottom line of the products is they got to really work, okay? If people are using the products, they're going to, you know, and they're getting positive benefit from them. The key is find a product that people will use independent of whether or not they're in the business because otherwise if it's just people who use the product just because they're in the business then it's not a legitimate direct marketing business um third ingredient i looked for was timing uh that's you know it, it's it's as simple as do you want do you want it to be easy or you want it to be hard if you want it to be hard pick the wrong timing if you want it to be easy pick the best timing okay and personally i like easy if, it, if, they, if, you can, if you got a choice, pick easy, right? Uh, there were a couple other things I looked for. I looked for, uh, you know, infrastructure. I looked for, you know, marketing materials. I looked for compensation plan. And those were more minor considerations because the last company I was with, they had, a, you know, a bad marketing plan. Uh, they didn't have any marketing materials. All those things can be worked around. But the critical three were leadership, corporate, the, the people running the company, right kinds of products, and timing. And, uh, and you're right. Uh, you know, frankly, it, it's almost embarrassing because when I stepped down, just about every single company, and frankly, most of the companies I got called on, they're not around anymore. They lasted a few years. A couple of them lasted maybe 10 years, and they're gone now. And people kept calling me, Fred, oh, man, you got to get into this. You're going to get rich, blah, 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 blah. Well, they were saying the wrong thing. You know, I, I'm not going to say I was rich, but I had created an environment where I didn't have to work. I could do the things I wanted to do. And I was in my 40s. 
you know, what do I care about? You know, what do I care about getting rich? You know, I, I, I like the car I was driving. I got to take care of my family, uh, you know, my son, then my grandson. That was the wrong thing. What they were not telling me about was an opportunity that I could pass on to my children and then my children's children and feel good about introducing the people I care about. Wasn't about me making money. Don't get me wrong, I like making money. But I would much prefer to have something that I can share with somebody and know that they have a real opportunity. And yeah, for, geez, many years, I passed on lots and lots of uh, opportunities. When I came out of retirement for Zija, I got to tell you, there's a lot of people out in the industry thought I had gone wacko bananas. <laughs> it's like, do you hear Fred? I mean, I, they, they would talk, right? Fred's back in. Really? Did he join, you know, beep company or beep company, which isn't around anymore? No, he joined Ziga or Zega <laughs> or Zuhu or something like that. And what do they got? One product. It's a green drink. <laughs> they go, really? Wow, Fred's gone crazy. Why would he join that? And, and, but see, they didn't get it. They didn't know what to look for. Wow. So, you know, it's kind of a wonderful thing when you get to get validated on, um, you know, <laughs> all the ones you turned down that are gone. And here we are, what, coming up to our 12th year? So, yeah, actually, um, 13th. Wow. Yeah, it was uh, November of 2005 was the official launch of ZEGE International. And so this will be actually our 13th year with the uh, 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 the company and uh, now 10 years that I've been with the company. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's really something. So now at this point where we are today, you know, maybe you could just kind of give us the overview from your perspective you know, with what we have in place? What does it mean for someone now coming in today? Oh, well, you know, I, I talked to you uh, just a moment ago, I was talking about, you know, what are the core ingredients that, that, that I was looking for? Mm -hmm. And the first two were absolutely essential. You gotta have leadership um, that has the, the track record, okay? Mm -hmm. And, you know, when I first, uh, let me, can, can I tell a little story? Sure. When when I was first introduced to ZJ, I got a call from a, from a friend of mine, knew him from the industry, had been very successful. We'd actually been in a previous company together. And and he would call me about every, you know, 12, 18 months or so on the latest deal, right? And, uh, uh, you know, and I mean, he wasn't necessarily different than a lot of people, but he did it right. He didn't just call and go, Fred, man, I'm glad I got a hold of you. I got some killer deal. You're going to get rid. None of that. He'd always call and say, how are you doing? How's mom? You know, how's the kid, the midget? You know, what, what do you remember, Jeremy, when he was short and loud, right? And, and so, so he did it right. You know, he he was was reconnecting the relationship, and uh, and he was telling me about, you know, hey, we got this this new company. You know, I hope you're open to taking a look at it. Uh, we got this great product. You know, you know, Moranga. I thought that was that dance, right? <laughs> and, uh, and, and honestly, I was listening because I knew what I was going to hear. And, uh, and it was kind of like, wah, 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 wah. And then I heard the name Ken Brailsford, the owner of Zegia. And I said, wait a minute, dude, back up. <laughs> start again. It's like rewind, start again. Because I didn't hear a word you said the first time around. But if Ken Brailsford yeah. is coming out of retirement, I better pay attention to what the heck's going on. It's kind of like, you know, psst, Bill Gates is starting a new software company. <laughs> really? Maybe I better pay attention. I'm not saying I'm going to go buy stock in Bill Gates' new software company, but wouldn't you be a fool not to at least listen? Mm -hmm. And so what I started to hear was the product. Now, the Ken Brailsford story I already knew. If you had a choice to be able to work with the only guy in network marketing history that's built two multi-decade, multi-billion dollar companies, and he's starting his third one, mm -hmm. you know, uh, uh, what are the chances Z is going to be in business for four, 30 and 40 years from now? Pretty good since his other companies are still in business over 30 and 40 years. I mean, that's kind of a given, but there had to be, that was good enough, okay? And, and honestly, whatever it was that he was marketing, so long as it was a real product, I'd probably be interested because of who he is. 
and knowing that I could introduce this opportunity to somebody and know that they wouldn't get, you know, get burned from the company. But then I started to hear the, the, the product. And back then, you know, uh, you, you started a while ago, we had more products when you started, but our core product line was Moringa. And when I started learning about Moringa, that really made so much sense. First of all, unique to the marketplace, first to market. Zeej International was first to market with, you know, Moringa Olifera uh, products available to the consumer. The top, the number one quality, we created our own plantations so we could have the highest quality organic. When I started looking at what Moringa is, one botanical with all the nutrients the body needs for optimal health. Single source botanical, optimal nutrition, enzymatically alive, because yes, my first company was a nutrition company and I've been very, I'm, I'm not the nutritionist, but I've spent years self self educating about nutrition and i'm thinking man this has got you know enzymatically live single source botanical complete nutrition whole food i didn't even need to use the product to know it was going to be a good product just just reading it it made sense it was going to be a good product now i had to that it's a ken brailsford company we're going to have top class products i mean cutting edge number one that i just knew that and so uh, all the ingredients were in place. The biggest challenge was the timing. And, and I know that that's kind of what, 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 uh, what you asked me to speak to. Um, most people don't get it. You know, starting with a startup company, uh, it's almost impossible to see success because, you know, 99.99% of the companies that start multi-level do not last past five years, period. Okay. Five years is a great run. Um, when if if i had my choice this is what i would look for i'd look for a company that was already uh you know somewhere in that 100 to 200 million dollar year range because when you've got a company that's doing 100 million a year they've got infrastructure they've got stability they're financially sound they've got the resources to put back into the development of the company back into the development of the distributor base but in in network marketing 100, 200 million a year ain't that big a deal. Okay, that's not a huge company. It's being in before the masses. This is what happened in the last company I was with. I got in before the masses and they didn't have the best product. Okay, they had an okay product. Uh, they had a pretty good compensation plan. Uh, we created the marketing materials, and it was an environment where people could create income. We were actually more of an opportunity-driven opportunity than a product-driven opportunity. That was part of the challenge was that company. Mm -hmm. But I got in before the masses, and when the company went from, you know, $10 million a, a month in sales, kind of like where Zeej is now, we're about a $100 million a year company, when we went from 100 million to 200 to 300 to 400 to 500 million a year, I made a fortune mm -hmm. because I was able to create a small piece of that platform. And that's really where we are with Zeta today. I mean, don't get me wrong, I'm, I'm glad I was able to be part of, you know, developing Zeta. But the, the, the significant opportunity isn't what we've had in the last 10 years. The significant opportunity is what's going to happen in the next 36 months. Uh, I just happened to, to be uh, uh, having lunch uh, today with one of our uh, up and coming uh, up and coming uh, superstars in Zija. You, you know Candace Smiley, and we were talking about where Zija is right now. And the fact of the matter is, the next 36 months that's building the foundation. Okay, I'm 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 gonna tell people right now. You, you focus on the next 36 months putting into place the organization when the company goes to 200, 300, 400 million dollars a year. This is where legacy incomes are created is in this environment that we're in right now. So um, anyway. One more, I have one more question for you. So okay. would you have to have already been in for a while in order to be able to maximize this opportunity over the next you know, three years, two to three years? uh be all, already be in zija yeah um you have to already be in 
there's probably, Amy, uh, yeah, I mean, for somebody like yourself who's built a significant organization, sure, there's an advantage because you already have a percentage, uh, if you will, what I call the footprint of the company. Uh, but when you look at where is Aegis going to go over the next 36 months compared to where it's been over the last decade, the, the, it's an insignificant difference. I mean, I'll give you an example. If, if you were to go out and get 1%, of Zija 10 years ago, if that 1% would be what, and we're 100 million a year, it'd be 1 million. Mm -hmm. If you go get 1% of Zija today, knowing that 36 months from now, we're going to be, you know, uh, my guess personally, we're gonna be 250, 300 million easy. 1% of Zija would be $3 million mm -hmm. in, in, in annual sales. So. Uh, it, it's kind of a fallacy in our business that you have to be first in, mm -hmm. you know, that, that here, here's what you do have to do. Here's the part that isn't a fallacy. You got to work. Okay? You got to be willing to share the message about our product, share the message about our opportunity. When you do that, some people are going to buy your product. Some people are going to join your business and the people that join your business, teach them how to, share the product and share the opportunity. Mm -hmm. And if you're willing to do that, and, and from, my, from my experience, you don't have to be a superstar. You have, but you do have to be genuine and, and, and realistic. Don't promise people are gonna make a million dollars, okay? Promise them they'll get paid what they're worth. And I'm gonna give you a good classic example right now. All I've ever done is just what we're talking about. When you raised your hand and said, I would like to do this, I said, this is what we do. We share the product, share the opportunity, teach others to do the same. If you're willing to do the deal, then I'm willing to work with you and share everything I've got. And look where you've come. You're an Emerald executive. You're on your way to Diamond. You've got the Mercedes Benz to prove it, you know. I mean, you know, and what was special about you? You said it. Well, let me tell you what's special about you. And folks, these are the things you look for in somebody. Don't look, don't worry about that red hot network marketer guy, because you know what? Those guys are a dime a dozen. Look for somebody who's willing to work, got good work ethics, willing to learn, be coachable, and a burning desire to succeed. And if you find that person, then you stick with them like glue, because they'll become your rock star. And here's what's really exciting. This year, my number one producer. Pat Anderson will exceed me in income. I want you to think about this. I sponsored her, but she will exceed me in income this year. Why? She's building a bigger business. So the money comes to the people that do the work, not the ones that got in first. Ah, that's terrific, Fred. I uh, really thank you so much because I, it is a misnomer. Um, and I, it's not been my experience. It's not what I've seen. And I think I hear it from a lot of people, you know, all oh, the people at the top always make the most. And I, I really appreciate your addressing that. And I'll tell you, we could go another hour. There is so much that you have to offer and contribute. Um, do we have, have to, to stop? Do this again. <laughs> do we have to stop? We, we, we could keep going. Everyone is going to leave probably though. <laughs> uh, but we have to do this again. Thank you so much. Thank you for your leadership. Um, and your, you know, general compassion, concern, and support of anyone. doesn't matter if they're connected to you in this company or not. You just go out of your way to help anyone who wants to do the work, who's coachable, and has that burning desire. So thank you so much, Fred. Yeah, my pleasure, Amy. It was great to see you hosting. And, and I actually kind of had a lot of fun today. You would, you mind, would you mind doing this again with me? I was <laughs> like being, being the other guy. Oh, I would love it, actually. And we have a lot more to cover, actually. Thank well, maybe we'll do it again. All okay. right. I'll say goodbye. Thank you, Amy. You can say goodbye. I'm not finding how to get you back over. So I'm just going to keep you here with me for a moment. I uh, just want everyone to know that we've got a fast start, excuse me, new distributor training Saturday morning. Um, if you're interested in what this is, this gentleman will teach you how to do it. It works, let me tell you. Um, get plugged in. Get back to the person who invited you to this call. It's a wonderful experience to be able to discover what's possible. Get your questions answered, and uh, please feel free to join us on our upcoming calls. Thanks, everyone. Have a great evening. Good night.